On the radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. But the coach of uh, Melbourne is Mick Stenier. He's been there right from uh, day dot, Mick. It's great to have you back on SCN. Yeah, thanks for having us, Brett. Yeah, it's nice that the season's come around again. Champing at the bit, ready to go. I mean, you know, such a, a, a tough end to the season and where it was at uh, last year and you're about to fly to Perth and play in a preliminary final against Fremantle when uh, it was all cancelled. It must feel like uh, a long time between drinks. Yeah, no, yeah, it does feel like a little while, although it, yeah, it seems like it's it's come around quick the last last few months. But, um, yeah, no, it was it was a strange end of the season, we, playing in front of no crowds, you know, for the, for the first time and... Um, our last game at uh, Spotless Stadium was uh, with the town was deserted, so it was yeah it was an eerie feeling. So it was probably the right thing at the time. So, uh, but the girls and, and the coaching staff, and I'm sure all the supporters are, are looking forward to having footy back now. Tell us about what's happened to your squad since then. You ha- you have made some changes. So we know that Daisy Pierce is going to run around as captain again. But just take us behind the scenes as to some of the decisions you've made with the compilation of your squad for this year. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, Daisy's um, raring to go and should be supported by uh, Karen Paxman as vice captain. And yeah, we think we're we're pretty uh, lucky to have those two leading our team. Uh, we've yeah, the trade period was a, was a busy one for us, and um, unfortunately, last year we had a lot of long term injuries, um, so change was needed. And then a number of players um, were offered uh, greater opportunities elsewhere, so that did bring about some change for us. And and out of that, we, we really targeted the draft and we brought in six 18-year-olds and, um, you know, there'll be two or three of those that will play and make their debut this weekend. So that'll be exciting. And, and we think, you know, for those girls, they've been playing footy most of their life. Like they've come right through juniors and yep. um, they've probably played 100 to 150 games of footy plus kicking the footy in the backyard and, and in the schoolyard. So their game sense and skill level and decision-making um, is at a really strong level. So we're looking forward to progressing those players and, and hopefully they help take women's footy up another notch. And, um, yeah, that was a that was a key decision, um, I guess, process uh, around that trade period was to invest in the youth and, and try and set ourselves up to be successful this season but for the next few years as well. It's, it's a great point, Mick, I reckon you make about the acquisition of those young 18-year-olds. I mean, obviously the AFLW competition was fast-tracked about... You know, three years, and we were thinking that it was going to start around now, 2020, 2021, and more and more as we tick through going into year five, we're seeing more of those players now emerging on lists who have, you know, taken up footy from a really, really young age and learned all the fundamentals, learned the game sense really well that they can hit the ground running as opposed to when you go back to year one, you've got some established players, you've got some code hoppers who are trying football, who have always wanted to secretly play football but are very much learning the game from scratch. It must be a good spot to be in as a coach that you have got those players who have been taught a lot of the fundamentals and you just build on that. Yeah, no, yeah, I completely agree. And I know early on we were, we were coaching players now learning footy for the first time. So, like you said, with the code hoppers or even... Um, some players had just had minimal experience of, of playing Aussie rules footy at, at junior level and senior level. So what they were learning about the game, it was being taught by us. So with that, it has its challenges. If you're, if you're learning from watching vision or you're learning from being told, you, you don't get that experience of experimentation and learning You know, when you're five to nine years old and learning all those game sense and decision-making that happens in our game. Um, it can be a bit of a challenge when... You're trying to learn from someone telling you how to play it. So uh, that's why it's exciting with these young players coming through. They've got their own sort of interpretation of how to play the game and then we're able to sort of put our spin on it um, and we think that'll be a, a more successful model. So, Mick, where do you feel like the list is at? Because from day one, Melbourne have been right around the mark. I mean, you know, we talk about last year flying to Perth to play in a prelim. You've been, you know, very close without being able to get to the grand final, without being able to, you know, to, to win a grand final. You've gone a little younger uh, in just realigning and reshaping your list. So where do you think you'll be at to have an assault this year? Yeah, no, we're, we're really confident we'll be, we'll be there at the, the end of the home and away season and put our hand up to play finals. That's, we're definitely in it this year to try and 
win a premiership. Um, I guess our first four years, we've, yeah, we've been we've been consistent. I'd say we've been a we've been a good team. We we haven't been great. We've we've lost some critical games, and um, yeah, we haven't been able to match it with with teams like Adelaide um, in their two premiership years. So yeah, we're, we're frustrated because we've shown some good signs. But um, we also know we've got to take a big step forward and we're confident we're going to do that this year just with, I guess, our experienced players. And then we've got a core group of you know, 21 to 25-year-olds um, that, that have experienced the last four years and have learned a lot. Mm. And yeah, we think they're ready to take the step up now and, and be consistent with their skill level and consistent um, with their attack and intensity on the ball. So. Yeah, no, we're, absolutely, we're looking forward to this season and we think we're ready to go. So that, that's the stuff that we see on the screen and at the ground is the, the aesthetics of what you're putting into play. But what a lot of people don't get to see is behind the scenes and all the little bits that have got to come together for a team to perform uh, really well and, and get the best output uh, every week. And you've seen, you know, this team that's, you know, a, a club in a sense within a club of the bigger Melbourne Football Club grow. What What's the biggest thing you've... You know, you've noticed it's really evolved just with the, the culture and what you're trying to build that can give you that best chance. Is the girls will be more in this sort of AFLW system? Yeah, yeah, no, really, really good question. And I, I think the big thing for me entering our fifth season now is and we've targeted players that are, are driven to succeed and they want to get the best out of themselves. And it's been, I guess, year on year, the commitment from the players, whether it's to improve their skill level or improve their physical attributes and capabilities. Those, you know, it might be the session before work, uh, session after work on top of the training that they already do, all that's starting to stack up now. So players that are hitting the gym three times a week and they're doing their running and now they're across their nutrition, like the the body shapes and body types and what they're physically capable of doing now, mm. um, power and speed, yep. that uh, yeah, I stand back in awe now some of our girls and yeah, it's it's it's, yeah, it's quite impressive and, and now I hope that you know the fans get to see that now because the girls have done a hell of a lot of hard work but um, yeah I'm, I'm excited to see it play out now. And, and Mick just from a bigger picture I mean you've got your coaching duties that's what you're uh, there for to really focus on but I imagine you you know obviously you're constantly involved in those bigger picture discussions not only with Melbourne but just the the competition and your input would be uh, seek just where do you think it's sort of all that at the moment and what, and what it can grow to. It seems like it's been done really well just to incrementally build it and build it, this competition, over the first five years. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I agree. Um, yeah, it's definitely a, a balance between expanding and, and keeping, um, I guess, the competition competitive and, and, and strong. Uh, but, yeah, the sort of one, one game a year increase, I think, has been really healthy. And we're at a point now where I'm sure everyone would like to play each other once. So with the 14 teams, that's 13 games. Yep. Um, is that something we can walk to work towards in the short term? And then no doubt, um, you know, the, the four remaining teams looking to enter an AFLW side are, are reaching to go. But, um, yeah, perhaps in the next two to four years, that might be the, the right timing. But, yeah, I think it's been a healthy progression so far. And I think, yeah, we'll, we'll see a really strong competition this year across the board. And your own, you know, continued development as a coach. I mean, obviously being involved in uh, the you know, the club. It's not only the AFLW coaching group, but you're also, you know, closely linked with the AFL side of things. And Simon Goodwin and his coaches. Uh, I imagine you've got, you know, plenty of people around you to to pick the brains of, to um, you know, just discuss footy with, to get different ideas and thoughts, and uh, and also, you know, looking at um, the, the mentoring side as well to continually develop as a coach. Yeah, I yeah, consider myself really fortunate. Coming out of TAC Cup back then, NAB League now, um, I was offered a dual role, so the, to coach the women's side, but then also be a development coach with the men's side. So I had four years of, of playing that role. And, yeah, like you said, it was just exposure to some great coaches and um, a greater understanding of the game. And not only... It was almost like an apprenticeship. You'd, you'd learn from Simon Goodwin and the assistants during the day and then you had an opportunity to implement it at night with the women's program so it was a busy few years but such a, a great opportunity just to learn and open your mind and yeah now I feel like I've been able to consolidate a lot of those learnings and and put that towards a really good program and we've got seven other coaches in our women's program that I love working with and yeah, we, we think we're on the right track with, with how we're educating our players and setting them up to succeed this season. Just on the back of that, I mean, the, the more we look at AFL clubs, the more we look at just 
you know, competitions around the globe, it, it seems to me, Mick, more and more that we've, you know, clubs have got better at identifying who can actually coach. Not necessarily whether you're a name and you've played and had an illustrious career. We know that some of those players haven't necessarily been the best fit to be a coach, but you know, people who love the game, who study the game, who maybe haven't had you know the playing credentials, but have just got a real appetite and, and can teach and coach and build relationships one on one with people. I mean, you only have to scour down a lot of the AFL coaching staff list, and unfortunately, we know that last year was a really tough year that some of those have. I had to go, um, you know, by the way, just with the the cuts. But there are there are, it seems like there's more and more opportunities to really make your mark if you're a coach, a young coach who's got some real genuine ambition. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think we're going to see the community footy get even stronger now with a number of those coaches not having opportunities at AFL level. They'll they'll then filter through to the lower tier competitions. So and they'll actually get exposed to coaching their own teams and, and get to experience being a senior coach because it is a unique skill set, no matter what level you're coaching. Like it's, a, it's a lot of people managing. Um, and I think what the past players bring um, is just that level of technical expertise. Yep. Um, so that's a, bit, that's a big part of coaching, obviously, but mm. also the best coaches um, out there are finding that healthy balance of, of managing people and the relationships um, while yeah, developing skill and, and having that technical and um, analytical mind as well. Yeah, so you get all that working together, uh, you, you've got a pretty good setup. We're talking to Mick Stanier, of course, uh, coach of Melbourne's AFL W team. They take on uh, the Gold Coast uh, this Saturday. As I look across this uh, competition, 14 teams, uh, Mick, give us just your assessment of some of the opposition you're going to be facing. Who's going to be making a bit of noise just from some of the, the lists that you've looked at and, and who, who's going to be the real dangers in 2021? Yeah, I think most of my uh, assessments are based on how last season ended. But um, obviously, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting year. So, I mean, there'll be plenty of excuses for a lot of players with with lockdown or borders closed. And so it will be interesting round one just to see how everyone's shaping up and um, how everyone's handled the, the challenges that have been these last 12 months. But, yeah, my thoughts are, um, I think, Fremantle... Obviously, they finished really strongly last year and, and Trent Cooper's he's done a great job with that side over the last few years. Um, Adelaide, looking at the scoreline, they kicked two goals, 21, mm. uh, in a practice match against GWS. And they've got Aaron Phillips and Chelsea Randall back leading them. So that's a, that's a bit of a scary thought once they get going. But um, I'd expect those two teams to be up there. And um, Carlton Collingwood and North Melbourne look like um, they're going pretty well at the moment as well. But... I think what what we've learnt, particularly over our last four years, that um, any team can win on any given day. Um, women's footy, the, the girls, they they crack in around the ball at a, yep. a ferocious intensity. So if if one team can maintain that longer from the other, they they generally get the uh, get the win on the day. So yeah, we certainly need to be on our toes each week and be ready for anything. Going to be a great competition, really. Even one last one for you. I mean, you mentioned a lot of this, you know, young talent coming into your lineup. Is there a couple of names you can give me, Mick? Just that, just you know, Brett, keep an eye on, keep an eye on these these couple. Not necessarily to pump up their ties massively, but the ones you've uh, really liked on the track who can really make an impression in this AFLW season. Yeah, I think two for me, just off, I guess, the pre-season and then practice matches in the last few weeks but Tyler Hanks is one who's yep. she's definitely ready to take a step up and she's someone we've really valued over the last few years but she's now had that genuine belief in herself and her ability and she's matched that with an increase in um, endurance and power and yeah she's she's one that you'll definitely notice when she's playing working through the midfield and spending a little bit of time up forward uh, and then Lily Mithin was someone that was tracking really well last year yes. but um, spent half a year on the sidelines with an ankle injury. Um, yeah, she's now taken another step forward just with her... She's tenacious around the contest, but yep. now she's complemented that with some decision-making and, and good ball use. So she's uh, she's one I'm excited to see her play and enjoy a full season this year. Yeah, daughter of Anthony, going uh, beautifully. A really good young talent. Mick, really appreciate the chat and uh, all the very best. As a coach, it can feel like an eternity a pre-season. Obviously, there's been some uncertainty around the fixture, but we're locked and loaded, ready to go. You've got the Gold Coast on the weekend. Uh, I wish you all the best and uh, really uh, appreciate your time. Thanks, Brett. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it.